on a cache miss, we have to go consult the next layer of the hierarchy. But as we saw, the data saw in our earlier pictures, the data that comes back to that is going to replace some data. That in a direct mapped cache, then there's only one place for that data to go. The address that we looked up specified a particular set, and so it goes into that set. Uh, in an associative cache with associativity two or more, then we have to pick which of the particular lines in the cache we should replace. Uh, one choice is to just randomly pick one, but uh, um, a more useful one is the least recently used algorithm, uh, which will replace whatever cache line was least recently accessed. To keep track of when a cache line was most recently accessed, there will need to be some extra bits in that line uh, to go along with the valid bit and tag and the actual block. Those are all issues about reads, but what about writes? Uh, writes is complicated. Writes are complicated by the fact that the same data can live at multiple places in the uh, cache hierarchy. Like when we do a lookup at a particular address, that value could be recorded in L1, L2, L3. We may have multiple processors, each with different caches, and so there is some complexity into keeping all of those caches consistent or coherent, as it's called for caches. Um, even without multiple processes, we have different choices of what to do when we write to a value as opposed to read it. Um, one is that when the address we want to write to is already in the cache, in that case we have two choices. We can update the value in the cache, but also write to the next layer in the cache hierarchy and so on, all the way back to main memory. Or we can write it only into the cache, since the processor is going to look for values there first, and set some other bit in the cache line to say uh, that if this cache line is ever replaced, then the values that are there need to be pushed on out to the hierarchy. On the other hand, when we try to write to an address, it might be an address that's not currently mapped by a cache, perhaps because we didn't just read it or we read it long ago enough that it's been uh, purged from the cache. Uh, in that case, the choices are that we can do the same thing as a read, cause a new cache line to be allocated to hold the address that we're writing. Um, that means that we may need to go get a whole block because we're probably writing to just a part of the block. Or we could choose to just uh, ignore the cache, not actually install a new entry for the value we just wrote uh, on the grounds that we might not be reading it back and just send it off to memory and let the, the next layer of the cache or main memory deal with it. Some typical implementations are to choose write through, that is, write all the way through memory, and uh, when there's a write miss, also uh, you're writing straight to memory, so there's there's no reason to uh, to pull things into the cache. Uh, another possibility is uh, write back profs write allocate, that is, write it into the cache and remember that it needs to be pushed out to later layers of the memory hierarchy, but of course that means you're allocating space for it in the cache. Um, if it's uh, if it's not in the cache already. Right. For the most part, these strategies don't matter to us, to our analysis of the, of the program. To the degrees that it, degree that it does matter, the book suggests that write, black, write back plus write allocate is a good default assumption.